Hi, welcome to Blue Line Bushcraft. Today we're going to discuss my everyday carry pack, the Mystery Ranch Urban Assault 24. I'm going to go through it pocket by pocket, kind of show you around the bag, and explain what I carry and why. So the Urban Assault 24 is a 24 liter pack. Uh, it has a couple different compartments. It's got this Y zipper up top, which opens up to reveal entry into the main compartment of the bag in here. Uh, you can unzip this entire length up front, giving you access to everything in the bag. Uh, folds open, and then up top, you have one zipper up here on the lid which uh, opens up for some lid top storage. And then right here on the back, you have a compartment um, for laptops, electronics, similar things of that nature. We'll get into each pocket coming up. So in the top pocket of my bag, I carry a couple items here. Um, first and foremost, uh, I carry a headlamp. Um, this is great for nighttime um, illumination if needed. It's the Tactica by Petzl. Um, runs off of a couple AAA batteries. Uh, nothing special, just a uh, nice headlamp, a couple different brightness levels, um, and a great source of light um, that you could use to navigate um, during hours of darkness, hands-free, um, be able to walk, get you home, um, that kind of thing. Next item I carry in the top of the bag is just a simple Bic lighter. Um, got several of them within the pack, but I keep one up top. I carry a handheld small flashlight. This is the Streamlight Micro Stream. Um, just a handy little flashlight charged via USB um, and has some decent output for its small size. Again, just another uh, light source um, that I carry with me. I carry a solar panel battery charging bank. Um, this will allow you to uh, charge this bank via solar and then using a USB cable I can charge any of my devices. In this I just carry a small bumps and bruises kit, um, nothing major in here first aid wise, just uh, some band-aids, uh, little cleansing towels, stuff like that. Um, this is also a waterproof container so uh, should I need to keep something small, waterproof, some uh, identification, other important papers. I can fold them up, put them here, seal it up, and uh, that'll be waterproof. I carry some of these expanding towelettes. Um, I keep them in a medicine bottle, but uh, upon moistening these, um, these uh, little pucks uh, expand, and they become like a, I don't know, 12 by 12 um, cloth of sorts. Great for cleaning up, washing things, uh, and if need be, wiping things. And last but not least, I just carry some emergency food with me. These are uh, Daytrex, um, just food bars. Um, I think they're about 200 calories each. They do come in a larger aluminum sealed foil packet, but uh, I broke one of those packets up to have some in this EDC pack as well as some in another pack that I carry. So that is what I carry in the top pocket. Um, this doesn't take up much room in the top pocket. It does leave me um, with some other room to carry some other things should I need to. So with that, uh, we'll move on to other areas of the pack. So like I said, this is my literal everyday carry pack. I take it with me to work. I take it with me on trips, um, stuff like that. So I do carry some everyday business stuff in it. Um, in that rear compartment that I was talking about, um, the zippered one, I do carry a laptop. It's a four liter area, um, so it easily fits my Lenovo um, Slim 7 Pro laptop that I carry. Um, I also have the Logitech mouse that goes with that, the charger, and then I have another solar panel charging option. Um, this is the BioLite solar panel um, and battery bank, which opens, folds out, um, has a kickstand on it, so uh, you can basically place it, um, you know, aim it towards the sun. It does have a little dial indicator here, uh, which helps you get it uh, aimed most efficiently, and these panels will charge 
this battery bank, uh, which does allow you to charge smaller devices such as phones and stuff like that. Uh, it will not charge the laptop, it's not quite powerful enough for that. Um, but uh, it's another power option that I carry to keep me going in the event um, that I uh, don't have any other charging sources for my devices. So that's it for the four liter compartment, laptop compartment, electronic compartment. It is padded, um, so it works out pretty well for carrying sensitive electronics like this. All right, moving on to the main compartment. Um, so as you open that lid, unzip that Y um, top, fold it back, zip the bag down. Uh, this is the stuff that I keep in the main compartment. Uh, we'll go over it later, but on each side of that compartment, there are other pockets um, where I keep other things. We'll go through those one at a time. But starting um, in the main compartment, carry a couple different things. Uh, I carry a cotton schmog just uh, in case um, I need it. It makes a great head covering, can provide extra warmth. Also can be used for filtering water or pre-filtering water. Um, can be used for char cloth, should I need it. Um, lots of first aid applications, obviously. The other thing I carry is a rain poncho, a military style rain poncho. This one is from USGI Industries. Um, it uh, is has the same specifications as the military ponchos, um, just an aftermarket third party company. Uh, works well as a poncho, obviously, and then uh, can also be used as a uh, shelter if I needed to. And speaking of shelter, I have two, I have this uh, two person survival tent, um, basically a mylar tent made by Don't Die in the Woods. Just a real quick option um, to get inside out of the weather, have protection underneath me and on two sides in a uh, V-shaped tent uh, with a ridge line, so that's very handy. And then also an emergency sleeping bag, again, just a mylar bag made by Don't Die in the Woods that I can get in, um, keep some of that body warmth next to me in the event I had to um, overnight somewhere. Um, trying to get back to a, a more secure location. Um, these three items here will certainly give me um, some overnight survival options as far as shelter goes. Uh, next thing I have here is my fire kit. Um, it's just in a, a bag here, but uh, several fire starting options uh, within this bag uh, and tinder options. So um, I have another lighter, I have some matches, I have a char cloth tin, um, which already has some pre-made char cloth in it, um, and some additional cotton material that I could make more char cloth if I needed to. I have a Blackbeard fire starter. Um, this stuff's pretty great. It's rope-like substance, impregnated, it lights right up, waterproof, all that good stuff. A ferrocenium rod with uh, duct tape wrapped around it in case I need duct tape, and of course the rod can be used to uh, cast sparks and uh, get a fire going. I carry one um, candle. Again, a great way to extend any of these uh, lighting options as far as uh, getting longer burn time should you have a more difficult fire to start. I carry some pyro putty. Uh, this is the winter blend um, in my bag that I have right now. Winter blend also works in summer. Um, so um, works great in the winter to give you some extended time. Um, I've got some fire plugs, similar to the Blackbeard fire starter. Um, these uh, light and burn fairly well for, um, gosh, upwards of a minute. Um, so a very good way to get some tinder going. And as promised, I do have an additional lighter, additional big lighter. And I believe last but not least, I have a Fresnel lens um, for starting fire via solar. And then I just have two sealed bags of dryer lint, uh, an amazing tinder um, and a dry option that I carry with me should I need one. So that's it for the fire kit. Uh, next to that, I've got um, water and a water bottle. Um, I can also use this water bottle to boil um, water if I need to um, with a hanger that I'll show you in a little bit. And then I also have uh, just a stainless steel um, cup. Uh, again, uh, able to boil, able to cook in this um, over a fire. Um, these are both made by uh, the Pathfinder School. So those are my um, emergency um, options as far as um, being able to cook and or sterilize water. And the last thing I have here is my first aid kit, um, kind of a trauma-based first aid kit. Quite a bit in here. 
going through it. Um, I have some band-aids, uh, just standard flexible fabric band-aids, some triple antibiotic for boo-boos, a uh, roll of gauze, um, just a little pill bottle containing some odds and ends, and here I have some uh, chapstick, some safety pins, and a couple um, flossers. I have a cat tourniquet. Um, Definitely prefer the cat tourniquets um, over any of the others. Make sure if you're looking at these that you get a name brand one. Um, the last thing you want is this plastic piece here to snap um, when you're applying tension to the tourniquet because um, that defeats the whole purpose. So I've got that there. I have another Mylar space blanket just for emergencies, keeping uh, anyone who's suffered an injury warm. A couple pairs of rubber gloves. I have a trauma wound dressing um, for packing wounds, penetrating trauma, that sort of thing. Again, I've got a couple um, hemostatic dressings, some chest seals, and uh, some moleskin um, just for you know covering blisters on feet uh, if I got to walk in for quite a while. Um, the chest seals, of course, for any type of penetrating chest trauma, and the hemostatic dressing helps stop bleeding. Um, I have a 10 gauge needle for uh, chest decompression if I needed to. Um, what else do I have in here? Scalpel. Um, some sail needles, not really a first aid item per se, but uh, great for making equipment repairs if need be. I have a couple um, just uh, capsules of Advil in here. And last but not least on the other side, um, I have a couple of uh, um, containers of sutures um, for closing a wound in the field uh, quickly if I had to. And that is it for the first aid kit. So all of this is what you find in my main compartment. This does leave me with two to three liters of extra space at least um, for putting other things in my bag. Uh, on a daily basis I put my lunch in there. Um, but again, I, you know, number of things that I could put in there if I needed to. So that's it for the main compartment. We'll move to the side compartments within the bag. Um, and that'll uh, bring us towards the end of our review of my everyday carry pack here, made by Mystery Ranch. So as I talked about, I just wanted to show the interior of the pack a little bit. Um, on each side, you do have some pockets here. Uh, you have a mesh pocket here. You've got storage all across the back, some different storage pockets, and then uh, matching side pockets and mesh pockets on the other side. So uh, we'll go over the side pockets first. Um, what I carry in there in one of the mesh pockets, I have a couple hanks of rope and a tarred bank line. Um, this is a survival cord in the uh, middle of it. It contains several different strands in addition to being, uh, I think over 550 um, rated paracord. Um, it has a couple um, survival strands in here. I think there's jute twine, fishing line, uh, wire for making snares, as well as the individual threads that you can uh, take out and use for sewing with those sail needles I showed you earlier, stuff like that. The tarred bank line uh, for any kind of lashing, um, you know, shelters, erecting stuff, uh, great strong cordage for doing that. A pair of gloves um, just to protect the hands uh, should you be out and, uh, you know, moving through an urban environment where things have become sharp, jagged, and stuff like that. I do carry this uh, Pocket Boy. Uh, silky saw um, for sawing, um, you know, easily up to four inch material. Um, great saws um, that they make and uh, could easily make um, firewood with this. Carry a life straw. Um, this is simply another water option for me on the go. If I don't have time to stop, boil water, or make it sanitary in some other way, I can simply take this straw, put this end of it in my source, um, use this end of it to drink out of. Um, and it'll provide safe drinking water on the go. Uh, these are great. Uh, I have a um, Victorinox uh, pocket knife here. Um, all kinds of uh, options on it. I've got a very large locking fixed blade. Uh, I have a saw on here. Um, again, another option for um, firewood. And then a couple basic tools, nothing fancy, um, but uh, just another knife. Um, that I have an option for. As far as striking that uh, ferrocerium rod that I was talking about earlier, um, the back edge of this will work. Also, what works great on it um, is the 90 degree edge on the Pocket Boy Silky Saw. Uh, last but not least, I carry 
an emergency whistle, a small pry bar tool, um, and just for funsies, because I have one laying around, uh, just a laser pointer. Um, you know, I guess I could point to things off in the distance if I was trying to show other people something, uh, things like that. Really, uh, probably a little bit of unnecessary weight in my bag, if I'm being honest. Um, so that is it for the side compartments. Next, we'll get into that back um, compartment of the main compartment, and then that'll be it for the uh, bag and what I carry every day. All right, for that last area of the pack, along the back um, of the pack, uh, this is what I have in there. Um, another small flashlight, again, a USB rechargeable flashlight. This one is made by Olite. Um, again, just another small handheld option. This also has a clip on it, so if you're wearing a baseball cap um, or something like that, you could certainly clip it to the bill of the cap, giving you another headlamp type of uh, option. It's also kind of a double um, clip, so um, it does allow you to maybe kind of clip it to your shirt um, or something like that. And again, provide pointing down hands-free light if, if you needed that um, for some small technical work in front of yourself um, and you were in the nighttime hours. Um, not as bright as a headlamp, so I'm going to provide you with some more discreet task lighting if you needed it. Um, I spoke about this earlier, just the bottle hanger. Um, when you do it, um, it will expand like that. Go down into the rim of that water bottle I was showing you or the holes of that cup. Um, and then can be suspended uh, over a uh, fire um, to give you uh, cooking and water sterilization option. Carry a Leatherman. Um, I think we're all familiar with these, but uh, this one has all the tools you would expect of a Leatherman. Um, pliers, knives, um, saw, screwdrivers, stuff like that. I do carry a Silva um, compass with me. Um, this gives me a mirror for signaling if I needed it, as well as a uh, navigation option um, that doesn't require power. And speaking of power, um, I do carry spare batteries for my headlamp. Um, this is two, um, this will allow me two change outs um, of batteries um, if I needed to change the batteries in my headset out. So keep me going for quite a while. I have a pen, um, pen here, a window punch on this side. Uh, if you needed to uh, break through glass, uh, which can be hard to break if you've <laughs> never tried it before. Um, it, uh, it can sometimes take some force, especially on vehicles and stuff like that. I have a right in the rain, all weather notebook um, in case I need to make notes of any sort. Um, I do carry a small pencil up here. Um, pencil because it uh, works great in the right in the rain uh, material and then also um, I can sharpen it. And it's a dependable writing instrument in the field. And last but not least, I carry a couple uh, N95 masks. Not so much because of our uh, friend that might still be lurking out there, but this is more so for uh, respiration, respiratory protection uh, in the event um, that there's a lot of airborne particles that have been released. Um, building collapses, earthquakes, wildfires, things like that. Um, always good to protect your airway from those smaller airborne particles. Um, it makes uh, it less exerting when you're not breathing in all that stuff. Um, and yeah, uh, always a good lightweight option to carry and an EDC bag. So that is it for all of the pockets, the whole pack. That is what I carry. Um, I appreciate you uh, going through the review with me and uh, hopefully you found it useful.